Hey Leon, how are you? Chat them up. Okay, just leave everything same. That's a hundred percent. Seems kind of low. Music is really good now. We as developers are always striving to co to improve our work. To do this, we need information that ah oh, no, we really got enough of that. <laughs> no, thank you. Join the epic struggle against the world loon, the epic war between Galarian and the Abyss that has raged for more than a hundred years. Up to now, the Crusader armies have barely managed to curb the overwhelming enemy forces, but not for much longer. The demon lords are preparing to strike a decisive blow. You will have to harness mythic powers, take command of the Fifth Crusade, and lead it against the demonic Boards. Okay, let me just uh, check on that. Uh, where would that be? Why wouldn't you would think it would be here somewhere, right? Giving permission to uh, spy on your ass. Let's see. Okay, allow sending all game statistics and allow sending a save games. Yeah, no thanks. I'm sure there are not people who said yes to that. <laughs> wow, that looks that looks epic. Okay, so we're gonna play normal. This <laughs> the last um, 
The last game was like super hard. <laughs> I think I played it on normal. It was really hard. So uh, yeah, we'll, we'll just do normal. <clears throat> critical hits weak. Damage bonuses are not multiplied on critical hits suffered by your party, making critical hits significantly. Okay. Guess that would be under what? Okay, that's core. We'll just do normal for now. Yeah, the last game was any indication. <laughs> Normal is still pretty brutal in this game. So casual story that companions rise up to combat. That's interesting. We'll just do normal. That face! <laughs> oh Jesus. Oh my god. <laughs> oh no, chat is not showing up for some reason. You like the outfit? Yeah, it looks nice. But why is chat not showing up on the stream? Maybe stream lapse down or something. Check something here. Okay. Emote wall, chat box. Okay, yeah, must must just be down. I activated the emote wall though. Okay. Pre-made build balance. No, I'm not going to be playing Tao Lin, the half elf. <clears throat> Sordara, the cleric. Ooh, uh, I don't like that here. It's stupid. I hate like the plain touched um, race. Oh, Oriad here. the fighter too bushy I guess I would have to change his looks I'll probably just uh, customize the little images on the left look so much better than the <laughs> game models <laughs> yeah this is the closest so far let's see Rex oh Jesus I might have to activate AA because it seems kind of Let's see. Marnan. Oh, Marnan looks pretty good. And he's a mage. No, he's a, uh, a slayer. What is a slayer? Is that like a uh, melee... Um, kind of like a thief, I guess. Kind of, because it has sneak attack. Slayer talents. So he looks pretty cool. Angie, A Angie, I like the spelling of that. Angie. 
Oh god. Sorry Angie, I ain't picking you. <laughs> and what is Angie a sorcerer? Why is she like trying to like about ready to to fight with her fist? Okay, we'll do a custom character. Okay. Uh, create a champion from scratch. Choose their race, class, gender, and alignment. Customize their appearance. And finally tune their abilities, skills, and feats. Okay. Oh. Look at these faces. I thought they were going to import... Okay. The faces from the last game. Because I saw it in the screenshots. I don't see them here though. Oh, here, here, Kingmaker. But where's the, um, <clears throat> I don't see the, um, okay, I remember, I remember this face because I've created a character based on her, based on this portrait before. Um, but there is this, like, archer, like an Asian looking archer. Oh, here he is. <laughs> I've also used him before as a portrait. And this guy is pretty hot, but he's like, um, well, he's actually an actual character in Kingmaker, so I didn't choose him because then, I don't know what they would do with that. I, then they would change that NPC's portrait that's not going to match his, uh, his in, uh, character model, you know, so. But yeah, last, last game I, it was between this and this. I like this one a lot. This this lady. That looks pretty epic. Okay, let's see what they have for this new game. Oh Jesus. Yeah, the lady does look very nice. Yeah, that's I think that's one of the best ones. I like her face. <clears throat> you know, um, very Ingrid. You know, when I make a lady character, you know, uh, her name was always Ingrid. And she's mean and cruel, so that was that was a perfect representation. But these newer um, characters here, I don't know. What is this? <laughs> Why is her nose like that? Okay. Ooh! He's kind of cute. <clears throat> yeah, that monk is pretty pretty cute. Uh, she's all right. She, that's pretty cool. Oh my god. Oh god. No thanks. <laughs> I think Leon, you would you would pick this one. <laughs> Okay, there's the furry. There's a fox here, and then there's another fox. Oh, a wizard fox, okay. Oh god, no. Oh god, no. Eh. Yeah, she's pretty chill. Uh, she's alright, actually. Isn't this the face of uh, Angie? Reminds me of a character from Bleach. <laughs> That's cute. Uh, no. Ooh. <laughs> you like the portrait for Angie, this lady? <laughs> I like this one. But I don't know, then she would have to be a bard or something. You know, to match the picture, I don't know. Oh, here's another bard, a uh, choice for a bard. Uh, okay. And I know you can you can uh, upload your own picture. Which is pretty cool. I'm not gonna click that though, because I don't want like pictures I don't want to show up to show up. <laughs> let me... Let me... <laughs> Let me, uh, I'll, uh... Oh, look at this. this is, I like this. This is pretty cool. An orc doing, like, office work. I like that. Um, 
I like his armor. He looks crazy. He looks like that villain from the first game. All right, um, let me just see if I can upload a custom picture. Oh no, I have to place it in a specific um, folder, I think, so it didn't pull up. Okay, that's fine. That is fine. Uh oh. Huh. <laughs> okay. So maybe the monk guy, just because he's cute. He's the cutest out of all these pictures. I guess there's that one picture of me with my eyes like um, all white that maybe I can use. <laughs> white and shiny. Um, but maybe not. We'll just stick with these because you know they will look so out of place so you have to photoshop your own picture and make it look like a painting and all that. Because if not it's going to look so out of place. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's let's see what options we have though. Um, so let's just pick this picture for now. Okay, alchemist. Look at all these. Uh... Subclasses. Vivisection. Okay, so where's the uh, the monk? Here it is. Ooh! Oh, well, um, hello. Yes. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> uh, scale fist sensei. Sohei. Student of Stone, Traditional Monk, Zen Archer, uh, Lawful Good, Lawful Neutral, Lawful Evil, Any Lawful. I don't know if I like Lawful characters though. I usually go with, um, what you call that, uh, oh there's no prerequisite here for character. Uh, Call that for the uh, alignment. So to be a monk, you have to be lawful. Let's just look at all these. Uh, um, ooh, barbarian also has like a pretty. Uh, oh yeah, that's that's a typical barbarian look. Bard. Blood Rager Cavalier. Oh, okay. Cleric Druid Kineticist. That's pretty cool. So in the last game I played, uh, my main character is an archer. May just look like Sub-Zero. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Witch. So if you pick that character, like the, um, the music lady, like, It's kind of hard to match that with your um, with the classes here. I, I know you can change their outfits and whatnot, but paladin. Oh, Let's see, Let's see 
Druid, Cleric, Cavalier. What's a Cavalier? It's a warrior who has an animal companion. Faithful steed, they can ride into battle. They're strong melee fighters who can also empower their allies. <laughs> yeah, there's so many choices. That's what I like about these, uh, the, the Pathfinder games. Like the last one also, it's like, just to customize your character, oh my god. Took me forever. The, the system is pretty complex. And the game is pretty hard. <laughs> I didn't finish that game though, I need to. But it's really fun, I played it like, twice. One time I played it like for, maybe 30 hours. And then I stopped, and then I played it again with a new character. So the first time I played it was with the uh, with the lady, and then the second time was with the uh, with the archer. Um, so I guess the question here is, do I want to? You know, we're just using his face. They they never really show you. I think the the big. Well, yeah, like during your character, um, if you look at your character screen, probably. No, I think for the character screen, they use a 3D model, I think. So you're just, you're just borrowing that phase. Now, what do I want? <laughs> Maybe we can be a lady bard or something, so then we can pick these two. So if I pick this one, that looks really good. But he's so cute. Yes, I think this game also has romance, I think. Uh, <laughs> maybe we should just pick this one, just... <laughs> just to make it interesting. <laughs> oh my god. If only he was a little cuter. I don't I don't mind like older characters, but they just have to be a little cuter than that. That just looks like the um you know the um receipt checker over at Walmart. <laughs> he looked like he'd be some cruel overlord. <laughs> Let's see. It just needs to be a little cuter. <laughs> see, Jackie, you can see it. <sighs> it's funny. Hmm. Uh, so tempted, but I'm not gonna do it. Let's see if there's any. Well, we can actually use this one now because I'm sure this character is not gonna be. Because this is from the previous game. Um, ooh. This is... <laughs> this is the scariest one. <laughs> this looks pretty good. Um, let's see here. Whoa, what was that? Wow. Okay, too bad he has a soul patch. <laughs> I was considering that. I was like, oh, okay, well, that looks pretty epic. Well, oh, no. Soul patch? No. You'd use that one? <laughs> nope. No soul patches for me. No, thank you. So disgusting. Alright, um... Oh god.
Jesus. Do I want to be a fox? No, I don't. Okay, so if I pick this one, let's see, Bard, where's the Bard? Okay. Bard is one of the best support classes in the game, wielding a lot of arcane spells. In addition to empowering allies that can heal them as well as control and weaken the enemies, Bards are well versed in many skills like disarming traps and especially good at passing lore and knowledge checks. I do like those. Um, performances most commonly help to empower the allies, but they also control or weaken the enemy. This ability has a wide area of effect. As a bard advances, they learn new songs with different effects. As a bard advances, they choose additional feats and abilities to make them more powerful in combat and more useful outside of it. Yeah, the Van Helsing one. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Archaeologist. No stodgy researcher. This archaeologist meets his research head on in the field. Looks like Dora the Explorer. Archaeologists sacrifice the bard's inspirational performance for a smattering of rogue talents. Hmm. Beast Tamer. Bards originate from a variety of backgrounds, schooling former shepherds, street charmers, and such. Those who find animals a more appreciative audience than humans are usually known as a beast tamer. Such bards can greatly enhance the abilities of their beastly allies through inspiring performances. Nope. A composer of sonorous laments for the dead and elaborate requiem for those lost yet long remembered, dirge bards master musical tools and tropes that must appeal to the ears and hearts of both the living and the dead. I like the description. What is Dirge of Doom? This growing sense of dread in this enemies must be within 30 feet and able to see or hear the bard's performance. What does that do though? Oh. Uh, expand. It doesn't say. What does it do? Dirge of Doom. Dread, sense of dread. What does dread do? Uh, Flame Dancer, I don't like the name. <laughs> Movements of Fire, adding its grace uh, to his repertoire. He seeks truth in fire, fire's burning essence. Uh, um, yeah, I don't. I can't relate to that. Thunder Collar, again. Uh, voices ring like thunder, calling the sky's wrath down upon their enemies. Why is it saying removed by archetype? It's like you would think that they would list just inspire confidence level three. Oh, okay, okay, I see. Some bards use their upbeat music to fire up their allies, but Tranquil Whispers do the opposite. They play their soothing com compositions to alleviate any emotional pressure to their, on their comrades and improve their concentration. Uh, that's too wispy for me. So I might have to go with Dirge Bard. Tranquil Senses. So what does... Okay, let me just check the rich bards here. Haunted Eyes. Who saves against fear, curses, death effects. Okay, you know what? I'm going for dirge bards. Okay. Okay, um, well... <laughs> we're gonna stick with humans because, uh... <laughs> the portrait is a human portrait. Let's just look at... Oh, that's a dwarf. With a nose like that. Okay. 
halfling is just so small. Oh, Jesus. Whoa. Asamar. Or read or plain touch. Uh, vampire. Kitsune? Oh, they're called Kitsune. That's <laughs> cute. Well, we're gonna go with human. All right, so gonna customize the looks now, right? Uh, where is that? How do you? Can you customize? Okay. Wait, you can't customize a face. Where's that? Oh, appearance back. Okay. Okay. Yeah, this is like the same like screen from previous game okay uh, background selection okay so we choose our background uh, your life is constantly pursuit of knowledge you have spent endless hours amongst books scrolls artifacts delving into the mysteries of this world and solving them one by one and yet you feel like it is only the beginning of your journey since there is so much to learn and discover Person of faith? No. You belong to a family wealthy and powerful, and this world is so much challenging than one may think. You had developed a certain set of skills to overcome those challenges, and now you feel confident in whatever lies ahead. Okay. I think I'm gonna go with a wanderer, a scholar. Um. Use device, magic device, and knowledge to the list of her skills. I don't know. Let's try wander. But for the um, she's gonna be using what mostly. Mobility, athletics, persuasion, trickery, lore. So maybe something that will enhance the lore, perhaps. Let's see, so that'll be scholar, though, right? She also gets brew potions as a bonus feat. If the character already has a skill. The class skill, weapon proficiency or armor proficiency granted by the selected background from a class during character creation and the corresponding bonuses from background change to a plus one competence and in the case of a skill, a plus one enhancement bonus in case of weapon, okay. Okay, you know what, we'll, we'll just do that. <laughs> okay, let's see here. So for, for what do I need? Racial bonus is charisma. Um, at twenty five points. Wait, what? Um, I don't know what would be good for a bard. Um. Usually they would explain it, like that would be in the D and D game. Usually, like um, uh, Obsidian games usually would tell you. So will. So maybe we do will reflex. Why reflex though? Oh, reflex is just something else. It's not even here. So, will. Where's will? Okay, will plus two, reflex. Okay, so it's actually wisdom. Okay. Um, okay, I'll give it two there. Charisma. Five. Constitution two. 
I don't really need that star, do I? Ooh. She's mostly gonna be like casting magic and shit, so. Maybe Dex? Because it's plus, okay. Um, looks pretty good. It looks better. Magic device, persuasion. Lingering performance, so they recommend lingering performance. What does that do? Let's see. Oh, then they recommended all these down here. Um, oh, those are prerequisites. What? Lingering performance. Now, what does that do? Let me read. Uh, the effect of your bardic performance carry on even after you have stopped performing. Okay. The bonuses and penalties from your bardic performance continue after two rounds after you cease performing. Any other requirements such as range or specific condition must still be met for the effect to continue. If you begin a new bardic performance during this time, the effects of the previous... Oh, that kind of sucks. Okay, um... Anything else? Endurance? Extra performance. Maybe extra performance is better? Okay, I'll go for extra performance, because lingering performance seems, I don't know, kind of silly. Because if you, if it still lingers, even though you're switching to a different song, then maybe yes, but yeah. Oh, we get to pick another one. Okay, so we'll, no, I don't want lingering performance. Combat casting. Maybe we'll do... What? Extra performance? So we get extra extra? Uh, okay, I like that. That's... That's fine. You can actually pick two of, of the same. Okay, I... Yeah, I, I like that. Okay, so choose spells. So we have Daze, Flare... And resistance. Uh, haze of dreams. You fill an enemy's head with waking dreams, a reminder of the pleasures, delights, and terrors to be found in the dream world. While in this strange dream state, the target moves at half normal sp speed. Okay. Ear piercing scream. <laughs> okay. You unleash a powerful scream, inaudible all to all but a single target. The target is dazed for one round. I, I like that. Where do they have dazed though? I guess we can just keep dazing people, but where's the, um, where's the music, uh, bard music stuff? And I don't have... oh, here we go. Flare Burst. Uh, 
Create a burst of light. Ca causing them to be dazzled for one minute. That's that's long. That's a long time. Conjure. Okay, maybe we need uh, healing spells. Hypnotism. But where's the bard? Um, performance spells. Maybe you don't get the fancier stuff until later. Like uh, you would think that they would be able to do it. Like now at level one, level zero. Um. Your gestures and droning incantation fascinate nearby living creatures, causing them to stop and stare blankly at you in a dazed condition. Sleep. Um, so maybe we do sleep and... Cure light wounds. Uh, choose deity. Uh, Abadar, the god of cities, law merchants, and wall, known as the walls, god of the walls and ditches in the eastern dragon empires. Strong neutral sense in this action. He sets forth expand civilization. No. Oh, on atheism? You have atheism in here? I don't... Do they have atheism in the previous game? On Galarian, atheism usually denotes the belief that those beings commonly called gods are not worthy of the authority and reverence bestowed upon them by others. Atheists rarely doubt the existence of deities and generally acknowledge that deities are very powerful beings, but deem them no more than that. Instead of gods, they tend to revere ideals such as goodness or freedom, philosophies such as prophecies of callous trade, or diabolism, or nothing in particular. Some scholars argue that the term atheist is incorrectly applied to these people, referring terms such as dystheist or misotheist. Others call them agnostics, insisting that no mortal can say what is divine, what isn't, as the workings of the divine are fundamentally unknowable by mortals. However, such distinction are lost in general religious society and must accept the more common term. Atheism is looked down upon in many parts of Galarian and is enforced in the state level in the nations of Rahadom in Garun, Tovet in the River Kingdoms, and Bachuan in Xianxia. Despite their lack of faith, atheists' souls are still judged by the Pharasma. <laughs> Their posthumous fate varies. Some are sent to planes best matching their individual alignments and philosophies, while others become bodiless spirits in the astral plane, are reincarnated, or find their fate in the graveyard of souls. I like this. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll pick atheism. Um, okay, I usually go for... Uh, what is it? Creature, overall moral, personal, uh, absolute environment. Uh, lawful characters tell the truth, keep their word, respect authority. Chaotic characters follow their consciences, uh, consciences, consciences, resent being told what to do, favor new ideas of a tradition, and keep their promises only if they feel like it. So I usually go for chaotic. I think usually chaotic neutral. It's funny how they don't give the actual explanation of uh, what that means. Okay, I'll go with chaotic neutral. Okay, here we go. Body type. Super skinny, kind of big, or average. Uh, 
Well, she's super skinny in the picture, I guess. Face. She looks, hold on. <laughs> she looks very Asian. Okay, so maybe number four. Okay, we'll keep number four in mind. Oh god, these faces. Oh my god, what is that one? Oh, number 11. Okay, 11. Um, scar, no scars. Skin color. Jesus, that is. Sickening. Wait. Where's the pinkish? Wait, what? They ain't got no pink skin color. She looks pink in the picture. Can I get pink? Oh my god. I guess we gotta stick with that. With tail. Um. Oh my god, the hairstyles are horrible. Dear lord. <laughs> the hairstyles are horrible. Why is so horrible? We'll pick that one, I guess. Beard. Okay, you can't pick beard here. Looks good. Um, war paint. Oh, jeez. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> okay. So we'll have her. Wow, the color selection is just not good. Blue. Um, how does she look in there? So she likes red and uh, purple, pink. Um... Predominantly pur purple and then red. Uh, okay. So this should be purple here. Dark purple. This one. And then red here. And you can't customize the, the color of the pants? Are you serious? <laughs> the pants gonna remain ugly green. Okay. All right. <laughs> you can't customize the pant color. What's going on here? Interesting. Okay. You should have run. May I see your entrails, please? <laughs> You're saying the wrong thing. You should have said, May I see your dick, please? Hold on. Just a little more. Stand with me. I do not find this to be useful. We shall overcome. Let's move. I'm wounded. We won't falter. My skills exceed yours. Aim carefully. I failed. I lead. You follow. None <laughs> it sounds like I really am. Our path leads on. It does. With grace. Adventures are exciting. Oh God. Away, you rascal! The spell's not working. That sounds like Lee Ming. <laughs> this hurts so much. Damn this silly thing! 
Your luck's run out. Cover me! Careful now. All I see is blackness. Okay, mad woman it is. Wherever my legs carry me. <laughs> quick, quick! Else we miss all the fun! Okay, mad woman. Her name is Fee Miss. Fee Miss. Um Cholesterol. Oh, oh, then this is January, February. Okay, they still have twelve months. Uh, Kuthona. Let's see which which month sounds the coolest. I think I like cholesterol. Desnus. These nuts. Desnus. Serenus. Erastus. I think I used Erastus before the other character. Lamasha, Neth. Okay, so it's gonna be cholesterol. Um. <laughs> so since September, we'll just uh, have nine. Okay. Ninth day of cholesterol. The road calls me. I'll take the bait. Nice. Okay, I'm happy with this. You can use range attack, sneak attacks, and flanked enemies. Okay. Oh, I'm just gonna drop her. Hey, somebody! We got a wounded fighter. Can we get a healer over here? Anivia. My, my, would you look at this? Uh oh. But why would you drag a wounded fighter into the middle of the festival square? Couldn't she be carted off somewhere else, like, oh, I don't know, an infirmary? Or an accommodating ditch? Make room, everyone! Step back! Now, what's the matter? What happened to her? The wound looks nasty. Who did this to her? Demons, prelate! We found her barely alive outside the walls of Canabras. Canabras is a city of glory, but not one of spotless virtue. Until the first... Mandavian Crusade. It was a small town perched atop a bluff overlooking the West Salen River. During the final dark days of Sarkoris, hysterical refugees splashed across the river and sought safety behind the walls of Canabras. At first, these refugees were allowed in unquestioningly. However, the Lilitu, Lilitu demon named Min Minagal entered Canabras magically disguised as a refugee. Once inside the town's walls, she revealed her true form and slaughtered dozens of citizens before vanishing in a cloud of greasy black smoke. After the Red Morning Massacre, as it was called, Canabras refused entrance to any except those who could demonstrate direst need. Individuals who fell under suspicion were turned away or executed on the spot. Canabras became known as a safe but suspicious city. By the time of the Second Crusade, the leaders of Canabras agreed to house one of the ward stones to guard against the demonic hordes pouring from the world womb. This act assured Canabras' role as a strategically vital city, key to the defense of Mendev. Mendev? Mendev. The walls, you say? The enemy doesn't usually stray so close to the city. Must fortify the defenses. And you, hold fast. 
Don't die. We'll see you right. We'll get you patched up now. But first, you there, guard. Take her weapons. Bearing arms is not permitted during the festival. Wounded or not, everyone must abide by the rules. She can get her things back after the festival. O oh, Inheritor, leader of our troops, the sharpened edge of our blades and the unyielding strength of our armor, Iomate, I beseech you, grant your mercy, heal her wounds. The magic envelops you, but your pain lesson only slightly. What's Iomate? Also known as the Inheritor, Light of the Sword, and Lady of Valor, is the goddess of righteous valor, justice, and honor. Having served as Aradin's herald, she inherited many of the last Aslantes followers upon his death and continues to espouse the ideas of honor and righteousness in the defense of good and the battle against evil. <laughs> Let me die. None of that now. <laughs> we need every pair of hands we can get in the city. We'll get you back on your feet and you'll have the chance to seek vengeance. My powers are not enough here. Someone call for Terendaleth. You then! Yes, you! Stop dithering and gawping and make yourself useful! Go and get Terendalem! Prelate, surely there is somebody else here better suited to running errands. She's cute. I'll get her! Terendalem! Has anyone seen Terendalem? Sila. Be quick about it before it's too late! Now, who are you? I don't remember seeing you before, and I have an excellent memory for faces. <laughs> I'm Phineas. <laughs> That's the first I've heard of that maid. Who are you then? What's your business in the city? My dear prelate, Please, for the sake of the festivities, stop interrogating this poor woman. She's been through enough already. Go on. I'll take care of her. All right, as you wish. You are our protector, and a dragon at that, so I shall defer to your wisdom. A dragon? But be on your guard. I've been informed she was wounded near Canabras. That means the demons are prowling just outside the walls, and the city's crawling with their spies. Others may be able to relax on this holiday, but not you or I, not the defenders of the city. Uh, demons. Demons are malign and destructive creatures, naive to the outer sphere, plane known as the abyss. Demons exist for one reason, to destroy. Where their move, where their more lawful counterparts, the devils of hell, seek to twist mortal minds and values to remake and reshape them into reflections of their own evil demons seek only to maim ruin and feed they recruit mortal life only if such cohorts speed along the eventual destruction of hope and goodness death is in some ways their enemy for a mortal who dies can often escape a demon's depredations and flee to their just rewards in the afterlife it is the prolonged it is the prolonging of mortal pain and suffering that fuels a demon's lust and lusts and desires for it is partially from mortal sin and cruelty that these monstrous fiends were born I loose the grudging grip of pain cast off the veil of suffering flesh let light and life go forth in triumph to repel the skulking shade of death. There. A beautiful silver-haired woman leans over you. She seems ageless, her face wholly unlined. A centuries-old sadness gleams in her eyes. The longer she speaks, the stronger her voice becomes. <laughs> yeah, are you really a dragon? <laughs> That's what I want to know. You don't believe me? Perhaps I should retake my true form and engulf this square with my ice breath to win your trust. <laughs> Pay no mind to my current guise. I appear this way when I walk among the people. I would hamper the festivities if I tried to attend in my true form. Thank you for helping me. 
I accept your thanks. But my work is not yet done. Who are you? My name is Terendelev. I am the protector of the city. My name is Terendelev. I am the protector of the city. My mouse is doing the double clicking again. I hate that. That usually is a sign that you need a new mouse. I do not know yet. And that troubles me. I am not entirely sure what the demons did to you. This wound is no ordinary injury and it was inflicted by no ordinary weapon. I have rid you of your pain and restored your strength. But only time will allow you to heal fully. Certainly, but be careful. I have managed to get you back on your feet, but I have not healed you fully. Alas, sooner or later, your pain will return. But do not be discouraged. You will recover, I promise you that. Tomorrow, come to the cathedral and say that you are expected by Terendelev, protector of Canabras. We will find a way to help you. But for now, Put this out of your mind and enjoy the festival. They are all too rare in this time of war, and merriment is one of the best medicines. Canabras is a city poised on the border. What? You're in two worlds. Um, oh. When the quest updates, you will see another. Oh, what? Wow, that was too fast. Dear Lord. Wow, I don't like the tutorial. It just goes on and on and on and they don't even wait until you finish. Music is banging now. <laughs> this guy's drunk. Everybody's letting their hair down, everybody's drinking, having a good time. But the demon spies never let up. So that means no fun for me. Do they want me to go somewhere? Or just enjoy the festivities? There's Sila. Pour me another one. Let's make this a day to remember. 
I do love a festival. When we win our victory feast, we'll put this one to shame. On days like this, it's as if the war doesn't even exist. Desna grants us peace. Um, I think I talked to all the important people. Oh, maybe. Let's see, where's the quest? Strange wound. Curse, perhaps? This will ease your suffering. What will? Oh, here we go. You better take a break from some fighting time. Not from fighting some time. The square is packed with numerous entertainments. Time to set aside thoughts of war and enjoy. Hit the manne mannequin. Uh, throw the dart at the target and sample special festival drinks. Okay. Uh, let me, where do I get the drinks? Oh, here we go. Let's do the darts. This reminds me of the opening of um, uh, what's it called? The Dungeon and Dragons one from Obsidian. Never Winter Nights too, because you start actually um, at the festival. And then they want me to sample some drinks. Where is that? Oh, yeah. Oh, I can't have that. Okay. There we go. <laughs> I love a drink, especially when the city is putting the bill. Whoa! Scared the shit out of me. <laughs> Dragon is <laughs> oh my god, that was so epic. <laughs> the halfling's armor is splashed with blood and he is armed to the teeth with a sword, a blade, and a hatchet on his belt. 
and the crossbow on his back. His voice sounds familiar to you. Who is the who is the Scari? You must have got a good job around the head, friend. The Scari's a demon lord. The most fearsome enemy of all crusaders and all living things come to think of it. The most powerful of the demons are unique demigods, ruler of the abyss, with their own individual power and abilities. These demon lords are known throughout the multiverse, and many cults worshipping them exist on the material plane. The total number of demon lords is beyond knowing. Of the countless powerful demons who rule the various layers of the abyss, some are more, more widely known and worshipped. The most ubiquitous demon lord and the only one that have attained full godhood is Lamashtu, mother of monsters. What's the situation in the city? <laughs> like you can't see. Everything's on fire, crashing down around our ears. Place is crawling with demons. Looks like a whole army attacked the city. We're sitting ducks. Care to lend me a weapon? I'll try to fight the demons. Sure thing. Here, take this. Best crossbow I've got. The person who made it said it could pierce the hide of a demon lord even. Good luck! Try not to get eaten now! Wait, you're leaving me? The halflings were to drown out by terrible rumbling and the rustling of countless tiny wings. What? Dang. Whoa. Oh. A mortal man snaps its jaws at the Lord of Locusts. Behold, I own a name. <laughs> Behold the death I saw. Silver dragon Terendaleb, the defender of Canabras, fell in battle. <laughs> Hardly surprising, as she had to fight the demon lord Discari himself. He willed the land to part and swallow all who dared to stand in his way. But the war was still far from over. Wherever my legs carry me. Oh, there's Amelia and Sila. Oh, holy mother of A small woman with messy brown hair winces in pain, uttering a stream of curses through clenched teeth. She is pinned to the ground by a couple of wavy boulders. Hey, hey, stay with me. You actually got pretty lucky. You fell down into a black hole. But at least you're not on your own. You've got a great companion. Everything's going to be just fine. Tell me something. Can you feel your legs? You want to feel my legs? I feel them all right. When say no to a little less feeling in them. My ankle's killing me, but my back seems to still be in one piece. My head, too. Oh, she's talking to Anivia. <laughs> I was like, why is she asking me if I can feel my legs? That's all that matters. Now, we're going to... Hey! Fancy meeting you down here. You're the one that Terendal have healed today, right? You aren't injured, are you? Will you help me get her out from under the boulders? Okay. Skill checks. Um. Okay. Uh oh, why should we help her? What kind of a question is that? <laughs> we should help her because we're crusaders, not animals or demons. That's why. 
I don't help anyone for free, pay up, or stay stuck under the rubble. No, that's... <laughs> I only do that to, like, poor farmers when they want me to do something for them. <laughs> okay, let's see. Uh, athletics. Do I have athletics at 12? I, okay, that's. I guess that's mine. That's my stats. Okay. No, I have plus zero. Okay, and I have plus seven for, for um, world knowledge. Okay. We don't have to rely on brute strength for this. I'll try and find something to use as a lever. Yay, you made a successful skill check and helped Sheila pull Anivia from the rubble. If you had failed the check, Sheila would have acted alone, so she would have become fatigued and incurred temporary penalty to some of her abilities. Oh, okay. You quickly find some suitable sticks and you free the wounded woman from the rubble without even breaking a sweat. Look at you! It's good to meet someone who uses brains first and brawn second. Ugh, damn it all! I think it's broken. Oh well, if that worse. I'll just make myself a splint out of something. Thanks for the help. I wouldn't have lasted long on my own stuck under there. I'm in Nebia Tiravaid, of the Eagle Watch. I was overseeing security at the Festival Square. I thought maybe spies or demon worshippers might have something nasty planned. What actually happened, though? Now that, I did not see coming. I don't think anyone could have been prepared for that. Well, I'm Sila. Paladin by the grace of Iomene. I crossed the whole continent to come to Mendead and fight demons. And, well, I've been fighting for a while now. I don't even want to think what might be happening up there in the city. Canabres has lost the protection of Terendalev, and of the Wardstone too, looks like. It's a relic without equal. It was placed here personally by Iomade's Herald, with the Goddess's blessing. I really wanted to go see it, to pray before it. But there's no point worrying about a stone when there are people dying in the streets. The Wardstones are a chain of powerful artifacts keeping the World Wounds expansion at bay. The first and greatest in the chain was erected in the city of Canabras by the hand of the Inheritor himself, a golden-winged angel sent by the goddess Iomade. Yeah, things are looking grim enough, but don't lose heart. Wardstone or no, dragon or no, Canabras will never give in. Simple as. Well, we've introduced ourselves. What about you? Hmm. Oh, Bravely Default just launched. I think I also have a key for that game. <laughs> oh, too many new games. Okay. Um, so I'll probably play that uh, a little later today. Uh, one person wars, another person's opportunity. I'm led by destiny. How about you? My name is Phoenix. Good to meet you. Now, tell us all about yourself. <laughs> Whoa, girl. Slow down. Exchanging names is enough for now. We don't have time to be swapping life stories. We need to find a way out of here. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't the name, like, you know? Now then... For you to digest. I'm out of here somehow. The city ain't far, only 30 paces or so. That's if you're going straight up, of course. I'm afraid we're gonna have to go the long way around. To summarize, there are three of us with five working legs, three pairs of decent hands, two clear heads, and one made of wood. <laughs> That's mine. Underground monsters beware! <laughs> Anevia, you stay behind us. You're in no fit state to fight. If we do come up against anything, the two of us will try to manage on our own first. Well, onward! May the good deities lead us back to the open sky soon. Party!
Alt one. Okay. Backspace. No. Um, if I just choose one. Okay. Um, that's good. Yep. You will find uh, object to loot um, to see what's inside. Approach and interact with any, like, it's any other interactive objects. Um, collect all. Um, how do you? I thought you can info resistance bonus. Can she pick up everything? Cute. Where's the light bow that I have equipped on me? How come I... Okay, I don't. to eight damage one to six one to eight uh, short spear okay. oh a shared stash there's sh shared stash how does that work Over there. Who's there? The fine apparel of this young half elf woman is torn and stained with blood, dust, and dirt. However, she holds herself with such dignity that you would be forgiven to think you were at a high society party. She's really cute, and not in the dank catacombs under the city. Her fingers grip her rapier hilt with confidence, ready to draw it at any moment's at a moment's notice. At her feet lies a dead body, so mutilated that at first glance it's hard to tell if it's an animal or human. Relax, friend. We're, we're not demons or cultists. Don't poke my eye out with that thing, all right? We fell down here during the attack. I'm Sila, that's Anevia, and this is our new friend. Venus. We're looking for a way back to the surface. Really? I'm so ever glad to hear it. Allow me to introduce myself. I'm Camellia. I was also in the square when... when... I can scarcely believe it. How did all those demons get into the city? I thought, naively it now seems, that the Wardstone protected us from attack. And Terendalev... I can't wrap my head around it. What happened to this poor man? Who is he? I don't know. He must have been in the square when disaster struck. I tried to revive him, but he was already dead, sadly. He didn't get these wounds from the fall. Be on your guard. Whatever killed him likely hasn't gone far. Hang on. I think I know him. His name's Aravashniel, the egghead from the library. He was a good lad, even if he was kind of stuck up. May his soul rest in peace. 
Tell me more about yourself. Who am I? Just an ordinary citizen who decided to take a stroll through the square on the day of the festival. But that's not what you wish to know, is it? You most likely wish to know whether I'll be a burden should you ask me to join your group. No need to worry about that. I can assure you that I am skilled with a rapier. And I also possess some knowledge of magic. She touches the polished snake skull amulet that hangs around her neck. Not many could withstand a strike from a demon lord, not even Terendalev. I can't argue with that. We're fortunate to be alive, albeit underground. Daskari himself has come to Canabras. There's no mistaking that ugly mug. Terendalev tried to fight him, but what could she do against a mere deity? Even the Wardstone was no help. Our city used to be protected by powerful forces, but now? We've seen how powerless they truly are. Henceforth, we shall have no one but ourselves to rely on, I suppose. Do you want to join us? Certainly. Survivors should stick together. It's only sensible. Who knows what else could be prowling about in these caves? We need to keep moving. There must be a way back to the surface somewhere around here. That's right. It would be the height of foolishness to survive a demon attack only to perish under a pile of rubble. Let's see if this poor bloke has anything useful on him. Not to sound like a heartless brigand or nothing, but we kind of need all the supplies we can get right now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> uh. Okay, I have a healing spell too, or have you forgotten game? What is this? Oh, loot. Okay. Trail me. Ooh, Terendev's uh, scale. Nice. Uh, usable item. Only one charge. Cast to level 9. Restore life to a deceased party member. negative level when this raise just as it had been hit by an energy draining creature though it cannot gain a number of negative levels equal or greater than its total hit dice a creature with permanent negative levels e already equal its hit hit dice cannot be brought back to life through raise day you acquired this item while exploring underground caves of Kanapas. Okay. what's in wait for me Upon receiving the attack command, the party member will move towards the enemy at the speed not exceeding the speed of the party member pos position at the front. Okay, that's good. Well, how come I can't... Optimal auto formation. Okay, whatever. Masterwork dagger. Okay. I hear the voice of the spirits. Uh, Open your heart to me. I thought she has a healing spell. Is that the healing spell? No, that's not the healing spell. Oh, here it is. Nice. Light spell. Second is to give one of the characters ever burning torch to carry. Okay. She 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 has the ever burning torch. Okay. No reason to pause. There we go. Do not 
Oh, they already have that built into this game. Switch between a turn base and real time mode. Highlight it in red, and your allies in green. A step on line, connect the character. The timer over a character's head runs down the time until next round to fix the character's current schedule action. Oh, 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 no, 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 I wasn't ready. <laughs> I was just checking to just check it out. I didn't, I didn't want to really use this uh, turn-based mode. I'd rather just use the uh, everyone's attacking at the same time. That's a lot more fun. They patched this in, like, for the last game, but now it's already in there. I'll cancel that because it looks May like. I see your entrails, yeah, we don't even have to uh, cast anything. It's an easy enemy. Uh, armor class one. to your regular weapon. Thank you. Dang. So chunky. Lead on. Is she, is she Sila? Yes, yeah, she is. Ooh, that's a lot. Tracers of armor. Oh, no, no. 
give that to her. Nice. And scroll of inflict light wound. She can cast that. Just walk away. Ew. It's got to be here somewhere. He struggled to make out the man's features in the gloom as soon as he steps into this circle of light, however. You realize that you have never encountered a creature like this before. The stranger looks like the work of a vivisectionist who attempted to stitch together a lizard and a man. I wonder if it goes down all the way to his dick like that. When do I? The man notices you and freezes. The curling horn protruding from his head casts a malevolent shadow on the cave wall. Lan, did you find it? Who is that? The woman looks just as strange as her companion, like a cross between a cat and a spider. When she catches sight of you, she immediately drops into a fighting stance. Her movements reveal the leather grace of a wild predator. The do-gooders here to save our mongrel souls, no doubt. Wait, they might know what's going on up there. <laughs> Monsters like you don't deserve to live. Should we kill him? But, you know, I don't know. It's kind of exciting to uh, to be able to uh, mess around with a half-man, half-lizard, maybe. Uh, why should I tell you anything? I just thought it might be nice to know why the roof was shaking. Ooh. Perception check. Tries to appear nonchalant, but he's visibly agitated. What happened on the surface has caused problems for us, and we need to fix them. Who are you, thieflings? Tieflings are the descendants of people who sullied themselves by mating with demons. Our ancestors would never sink that low. We are the Underground Crusaders, the children of the Crusade's finest. Sadly, Underground Crusaders is a bit of a mouthful, so people usually just call us mongrels. <laughs> you just love repeating that, don't you, Len? Mongrels. That's what the Uplanders call us. But we call ourselves Neethers. No matter what you call us, it's not going to stop our horns, hooves, or tails from growing. What are you doing here? That's none of your business. We're looking for a holy sword. It was here, in the center, sticking out of a rock. 
The sooner we find it, the better. Some kids from our tribe took off for the shield maze. They figured it had collapsed, and now it's their time to go up to the surface, like all the legends foretold. Except they don't have a clue what's waiting for them up there. They're not fighters. And Saul, the chief of our tribe, is dead set against it. He says that now isn't the time for the underground crusaders to take up arms. If we get the holy sword, we might be able to change the chief's mind. It's a fool's errand. None of us will be able to hold the sword, let alone use it to save anyone. It's not an ordinary weapon. It's made from righteous heavenly flame and will burn anyone who touches it. Do you think you're special, Lan? Heaven is a plane in the outer sphere, a realm of pure righteousness, where the forces of good gather to aid those on less virtuous planes and help worthy souls find rest. Though inconceivably large, it appears to most viewers as a mountain with a mysterious floating peak. Heaven's residents see law and goodness as largely the same force. Order is the greatest good, and goodness is the greatest order. They recognize the good intention of the Azedas of Elysium, but view them as misguided children. Similarly, they oppose the lawful evil forces of hell, but credit them with intelligence and belief, believe that they can at least be reasoned into truces and stalemates, and perhaps even redeemed. I'll pick it up with my teeth and tie it to my hand if I have to. It doesn't matter. An angel's sword and a troop of stalwart mongrels will be able to work a minor miracle. <laughs> uh, speaking of which, you're still here, Wendu, which means that deep down, you know it's possible. Angels are a group of altruistic celestials native to all three upper planes, Nirvana, Heaven, and Elysium. They represent all the multiple interpretations of goodness. The eldest angels were one of the first creations of the primordial deities of good, making them one of the oldest races in the great beyond, and were trained as celestial guardians and servants from birth. Most serve their creators to this day. Most angels in modern times come from ascended good mortal souls rather than direct divine creation. Sometimes these souls even retain aspects of their mortal form. Uh, oh, got more stuff there. Maze, does it really lead to the surface? Yes, there are other ways up, but they are far from here. And after the earthquakes, there's a good chance they've collapsed. But the maze... There's a legend among our people that when the walls of the maze fall, that will be a signal for us, the underground crusaders, that the time has come to go up to the surface and fight the demons in the final confrontation. <laughs> Until then, the people say the maze is shielding us from taking rash actions. I'm the only one in our whole tribe to have been in the maze. And even I don't know if it's true. But the further I went in the maze, the fresher the air became. That means that it really must lead to the surface. When the ceiling and walls started shaking, the young ones in our tribe lost their heads. They figured the maze was going to collapse, so it was time to go up to the surface. They grabbed whatever weapons were on hand and ran off toward the maze. They think the maze is no longer a danger to them. They've been listening to Wendelog too much. Don't try to blame this on me. Yes, I told them that our people are capable of making our way through the maze. In the future. But I always told them to wait until I had made a map of all the maze's dangers. I warned them a hundred times. But it was no use. My words just went in one ear and out the other. A sword of holy flame? How did it wind up down here? It came here with its owner. 
A long time ago. 50,000 guns, to be precise. 70 years ago, in Uplander time. 50,000 gongs ago, our forebears found a dead angel here, along with the bodies of his comrades. The tribe gave them a dignified burial, and they were laid to rest with their weapons. But the flaming angelic sword was stuck in a rock, and no one was able to pull it out. It burned to the touch, like real fire. So the rock was placed over the angel's grave. It should be here somewhere. Maybe the angel will dig himself out and find the sword for us. That might be our best shot in this chaos. Lan! Watch your tongue. What is this place? This is the hall where we remember the glory of our forebears. Sorry about the mess. Uh, it doesn't usually look like this, trust me. Sometimes we even wipe the dust off the exhibits. This is where the relics of the First Crusaders are displayed. Our lives are short, our glories are quickly forgotten. But this place helps us to remember that we are just as worthy as anyone else. And that our lives are not lived in vain. Oh, the First Crusaders? You've been down here that long? That's crazy. Never heard of underground crusaders before. In Canabra, they're called Mongols. People say that they come up to the surface at night and eat anyone foolish enough to wander alone after midnight. <laughs> to tell you the truth, I thought you guys were just a tale to tell kids at night. <laughs> That's human gratitude for you. Our forefathers suffered the consequences of demonic corruption, all to protect Mendev and Golarium. And for what? So we could become monsters used to frighten children. Mendev. A uh, nation of Mendev is a land defined by its conflict with the abyssal forces unheard of anywhere else on Glorian. The people of this beleaguered land believe the leaguer land are locked in a constant struggle with the world wound, the demonic rift that lies beyond its western border. Uh, oh, this is near the plane, planet Glorian orbits a yellow sun in the far reaches of the material plane, third of eleven in orbit. This blue planet contains vast ocean and lush green lands and is the perfect environment for countless cultures. Indeed, Galorian is the most populous planet in its solar system. Its innately hospitable and life-sustaining environment is presumably the work of the gods, so astronomers sometimes refer to Galorian as the child. Astronomers of other planets, however, often refer to Galorian as the cage, in reference to its cosmic role as a prison of the mad god Ravagug, who lies bound at the world's core. Every mongrel has their own take on it. Our chief, for example, thinks of us as something like a reserve military force. He thinks we're standing by until the moment we're needed, and when we emerge on the surface and save the day, all the people will see how good we are, and they'll love us for it. Yeah, he leaves that last part out when he talks about it, of course, but it's easy enough to read between the lines. Demons are laying waste to Canabras. If things are as bad as you say, then we all have to hurry. You didn't come from the direction of the shield mace. Damn it. I couldn't care less about what's happening on the surface but the maze. I realize that you guys have your own troubles, but we need to be in Canabras. People are dying up there. Please, show us the way out. I can help you, but you're going to have to pay for it. Of course. How about we do this? 
You help us. <laughs> and we don't leave you here to rot in these underground tunnels that only we know. I think that sounds fair. Yeah, and we could throw in a dozen fresh rats to sweeten the deal. That's a tempting offer in these parts. Help us, and we'll help you. This is very important. Windowog believes the maze leads to the outside. She knows what she's talking about. All right, underground folks, you got yourselves a deal. But if you find the sword first, don't forget we helped you. Our agreement still stands. Some interactive objects aren't easy to find. Moving past up objects, can't automatically do a perception check. Uh, it is highlighted, drawing your attention. Okay. Found anything? Monsters like you don't deserve to live. <laughs> no, I still like to keep them around. I want to try out that human lizard dick. What's in the there? I wonder. Uh, something. Nice. That was quick. Uh, let's loot first, though. What's that there? The room looks like an improved museum. Improvised museum, perhaps some kind of temple. Now, what is that? Let's check this one first. Statue of an unknown knight. The technique is crude, but the figure was clearly crafted with genuine feeling. Wherever my legs carry me. Handful of gems. Grinding stone. More gems. That's the one. Excalibur. Ooh. Day 15, month Erodus, year 1715. A strange flash pierces the gloom, and Thenis feels drops of searing blood run down her chest. The wound healed by Terendalev reopens and weeps scarlet, and there is no pain or weakness. A hazy scene appears, a cave chamber. This one or another, one entirely? Thenis's heartbeat quickens, and a stream of thoughts suddenly burst into her mind, thoughts that clearly belong to another. Treachery, they betrayed me, trapped me, and stabbed me in the back. My trusted allies, the treasure, my treasured friends, the people I swore to protect, the people for whom I descended from heaven, and came to this turbulent mortal world. There they are, up ahead in the gloom of the cave. What are they waiting for? Are they afraid to draw any closer? Do they believe I'm about to die from their treacherous blows? Next to me, a quiet moan. A girl with a golden braid lies on the rock. Rocks clutching her slashed side. She refused to join with the traitors and paid dearly for it. I could have tried to run, but I will not. Whilst I still have strength, I must. While recognizing the foreign origin of these thoughts, Phoenix in intuits that she can control them somehow. Let's try to... Um, interesting. I want to know who the traders are. So if I don't choose that now, will I know? You know. Um. Uh, heal the wounded girl. A spark of healing magic illuminates the eerie, murky scene before Venus. The wounded girl opens her eyes and whispers, "Lariel, you." 
You said that everything was going to change soon. You said you and the other warriors of heaven would be leaving us on a grand mission to stop the demons forever. Is that true? The frenzy of foreign thoughts comes faster and faster like a rushing river, and images flash by one after another. A priestess in colorful robes observing the stars, a young female paladin praying, clutching her glowing sword, a majestic golden-winged angel gazing into the distance, his face covered by a helmet but his voice ringing clear. Only if you're willing, and only if you're ready, there's no going back. Then don't waste your strength healing me, the girl whispers. Your mission is more important. You take care, it is near. There in the, in the vision, the darkness in the cave stirs into motion. Something massive appears within its depths, a vague shadow, an outline, a nightmare come to life. A wave of odious chirruping and rustling emanates from the shadow, the sound piercing like hot irons lancing through flesh and bone. The traitors fall to their knees before the shadow in reverent ecstasy, and the wounded girl trashes in the death throes. The yawning chest wound burns white hot. Venus's head <laughs> pounds with pain, and it is no longer clear whose pain it is. The person called Larios who sent this vision, or the one unlucky enough to receive it. Okay, so I have seven will, three arcana, so but Venus is determined to fight off the illusion. Okay. The force of the attack, though originating in a vision, is terrifying. But Venus but penis, Venus, Venus is stronger. She shakes off the pain and torpor, but alas, the one who sent the vision cannot claim the same. He is broken and exhausted. The monstrous shadow emerges from the murk of the cave. It is not real. It exists only in a strange vision of memory, but the thrill of fear it provokes is more than real. The shadow's features starkly resemble those of the Skari, the terrifying demon lord. In a movement as swift as though it's as thought itself, the monster's hand is wrapped around the throat of the one they call Lariel. The foolish angel struggling on the rocks, like a fly with its wings torn off, intones the shadow. Its voice changes as it moves, shifting from a quiet whispering to a sonorous shout, becoming young and then old and quivering. Where is your go goddess now, angel? Where is her self-assured herald? How is that you're dying here alone, so far from the light of heaven? A strange calm enveloped the thoughts of the one called Lariel. He recognizes who stands before him and he knows he will never bow down before his enemy. The flaming sword flares to life in his hand, bright, pure, flickering with multicolored sparks like a sunbeam through stained glass. Slash. The blade slices through the demon, demonic creature's flesh, and the monster recoils with, with a howl, releasing a grip on Lariel's throat. The angel falls back heavily on the rocks. His vitality is ebbing, but his Pride remains undiminished. He grips the sword, and with his last burst of strength, plunges it into the rock. Venus, uh, Venus senses that the vision is fading, the rush of thoughts diminishing like a river running dry. The last thing she hears is this. You will kill me, monster. This I know. But one day, someone will come here and raise up my sword. They will raise it up and... Punish evildoers and traitors, not save and protect the innocent. Fuck that. The vision disappears, vanishing in a burst of colors. Venus does not hear the final words, but she seems to complete the thought, taking it to heart. The words fly from her lips, and with them, something else. The heat blazing in Venus's chest fades away. The edges of the scarlet wound close, leaving not even a scar behind. 
Looking down, Phoenix sees the flaming sword in her hand, or rather, the, its outline, the memory of what the, sword looked, what the sword looked like. With a final surge of warm and soothing light, the sword vanishes and the light is drawn into her hand. Phoenix senses that it will return. All she needs to do is call it. She got it already? Hey, are you alright? You were kind of glowing just now. <laughs> Sila <laughs> kneels before the light, offering a prayer to Eum. Eum it. That. That was it. The light of heaven. But how? What did you do with it? Where did it go? I think I saw the memories of Lariel, the angel who died here. Lariel? That really was Lariel? The angel from the legends. The ancestors even got his name right on the gravestone. The chief will be thrilled. You. Thousands of gongs and no one's been able to touch it. And now you. An ordinary creature of flesh and blood no different to us. Get the sword and start talking about visions. Now, now, Wendoa, don't be a sore loser. She is clearly different from us. The sword appeared before her along with the angel's name and all that other stuff. Because she doesn't carry our mongrel taint. Heaven doesn't give a damn how special we are. We're born with evil inside us. Heaven doesn't need to know any more than that. I know you're willing to tear anyone apart to uphold our people's honor, but... You insult. You just refuse to face the truth. We are the way we are because our ancestors' bodies were corrupted by the Abyss. It does the same thing to plants and animals. There's nothing heroic or special about it. It doesn't make us better. And it doesn't make us worthier. Abyss. Oh, this long fucking uh, text here. The abyss is a realm of infinite horror and unlimited danger. Its vast charms, known as the outer rifts, when wind throughout the surface of the outer sphere. Where the outer rifts of the abyss open onto realms like Elysium or even in heaven, there are the sites of eternal wars against the celestial races. Here, the armies of good maintain permanent encampments along the edges of the abyssal rifts and do their best to prevent the rifts spread. For spreading is the correct word. The outer rifts are growing, albeit slowly. Scholars believe that this is a sure sign of the end of all things, that nothing can stop the growing dissolution of the outer sphere, and that at some time in the future, the abyss will consume it all. Worse, the outer rifts do not constrain themselves to the outer sphere. They can open elsewhere, and have done so countless times before the, to, consume the, to consume entire worlds. The malevolent wool wound in the northern Avistan is but the latest to appear in the material plane, a rent in reality that even the full might of the notion of Mandev is unlikely to contain for long. The abyss is possessed of many layers strung together by the river Styx. Its inhabitants are demons, its rulers demon lords, who wrested control of the plane eons ago from the primordial clip clip hoth clip -hoth. You saw it too, the traitors, the dying girl. It's only us here, your group, you, me, Wendu, and the light of heaven that sort of got, uh, sucked into you. Any chance you can whip it out again? We do kind of need it. Sorry, I crack jokes when I get nervous, and when I'm upset, and when I'm happy. A anyway, what I said, it came out wrong. We need to bring you to Chief Sun. <laughs> you can show everyone the light of heaven, we'll rally the tribe, and go into the maze, and we'll get back our kin. Phoenix can always be whipped out again, you know. And if you have Phoenix, you can have whatever you want. 
And what if she can't make it happen a second time? What then? The tribe will just say we're crazy and turn its back on us. It seems I can control it. Whip it out. That is just... <laughs> wow, I mean, that's amazing. Heaven has truly blessed you. Heaven has truly blessed you, Thetis. <laughs> this power is the most majestic thing I've ever seen in all my life. Is this what the sun is like, Lan? Yes, it's similar. But this light is more... golden? Chief Sol needs to see this. Now that we have the power of angels on our side, he can't say no. He'll have to assemble a troop to storm the maze. You Uplanders care about your kids, right? Help us save ours. Without them, we won't survive. And then... The perils of the maze won't be so bad if we go together. We'll make our way through it and find a way to Canabras. Lead us to your chief and I'll decide if I'm going to help you or not. Let's go. We'll take the short route. Well, the only route, really. Now, well, what is that? Sometimes interacting with an object requires a skill check, a successful skill check, and necessary to perform various tasks, climbing over an obstacle, picking a lock, Moving something heavy, reading an inscription, different tasks take different skills. If you have several characters selected at the same time, the action will be performed by the character with the highest skill bonus, so you should select a whole party before attempting a check. Okay. Save that real quick. Well, this didn't go well. Meditate on your mistakes. Um, you oh, we got those guys now in our party. Hold on. Let's check out. Nice. He looks very similar to his portrait for sure. Um, what is he? Is what class is he? Where's that? Zen Archer, okay. Oh, it's right here. And she's a fighter. Ooh, I love her. That's pretty cool. And she's just a regular fighter. One. Forwards. No, backwards. Thanks, Lan. You're so awesome, Lan. <laughs> oh, finally. It finally succeeded the uh, mobility check. That's funny. Most of the game's mechanics are based on the rules of the tabletop RPG Pathfinder, which uses dice for determining outcomes of various actions. The most commonly used die has 20 sides denoted in the rule as d20 it's the die you roll during attacks and skill checks when you need to roll dice the specific type of roll is denoted as xdn where n is the number of sides of the die you use um, in this case and x is the number of dice rolled for example 1d20 means result can be 1 to 20 one roll of a two-sided, twenty-sided die, and two d six means two to twelve. Roll two six-sided die and add up the result. Trying to get over the rubble, your character Lan got a result of sixteen. The result is the sum of the dice roll, which was nine, and the various modifiers such as the mobility skill bonus. The check's difficulty was twelve, since sixteen is not lower than twelve. Thus, uh, the attempt has been successful. Okay. Took him a while, though. Okay. Um, 
she is okay we're gonna customize it away summation star formation triangle uh, we should do waves formation she goes in the back uh, since she is a warrior she goes to the front she's an archer she I'm gonna be in the middle she's gonna be over here <gasps> Giant spider. Every event is documented in the combat log. There, there you can see the result of roles. Uh, skill checks. You're unhappy with the ways combat goes. Um, check out the details of roles. You might find some information that would help you out. My attackers. I was just gonna save and then uh, stop the stream. But okay, we're gonna gonna try and kill this big spider first. Oh, it's not a boss. Okay, I thought it was a boss. I was scared there for a sec. <laughs> Stop that big ass hairy bitch. It's funny. Okay, uh, where am I? Oof, I thought it was a boss. I was just like, yeah, we're gonna die. Uh, this is weird, I can't move the... I can't use the... Um, I can't use the keyboard. What's going on? <laughs> the keyboard is not working! No! What happened? This way. Okay, hold on. Why is the keyboard stopped working? It's funny. I think there was a bug like this in the first game too, if I remember correctly. Was it this game or some some game? I think it was probably the, the first Pathfinder game where the keyboard doesn't work all of a sudden. Yeah, it was. So the same bug actually made it to the sequel. I think it was this game. There you go. <laughs> it's a it's a really strange bug. I guess they never figured it out. It was still in the code somewhere, you know. Okay. All right, we're gonna stop here. Yeah, this game is pretty fun. It's very beautiful. Um, I like it. I like the story. Um, I like my character. I like Phoenix a lot. I mean, I really do. I love, I love, I love Phoenix so much. I could, I could kiss it. You know, I mean, I could kiss her. Um. <laughs> But yeah, I'll, I'll definitely play this again. It's, it's a lot of fun. And I really, I'm, I'm invested in this character. I'm invested in Venus. For sure. But uh, I gotta go check, um, uh, what you call that? Uh, Bravely, Bravely Default too. I'll probably stream that in probably about an hour. Thanks for being here, Leon. I will talk to you later. We'll play, um, I'll play some more uh, Aliens later today, though, for sure. And I, last night when I was playing it, uh, <laughs> I got killed during the last wave. I'm not even sure if that was the last wave, but, uh, yeah, it was, it was horrible. Talk to you later. Bye.